Welcome to week seven of Bible Studies for Life. Hope you're having a great start to your new year, 2023. Who knows what's going to happen, right? I think we ought to, if we're wise, we've given up trying to predict that. But I'm glad you're with us this week. We're going to have a great time. Special week uh, among Southern Baptists this uh, Sunday coming up. A lot of churches recognize this is a Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, so uh, Bible Studies for Life has a special lesson just for this week, kind of an insert into what we've been doing, maybe a break as we start a different section uh, on the following week. But looking forward to this, Psalm 139, a great psalm. We're excited to do it. Uh, before we look into that, be sure and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. That way you get a notification whenever the videos drop on Monday. Uh, like the video, share it with others, comments, questions, all of those, please do those. All right, let's dive into Psalm 139. It says, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up, you understand my thoughts from far away. You observe my travels and my rest. You are aware of all my ways. Say, so first of all, we're not going to go through the entire psalm. We're a couple of parts, but you ought to read the entire psalm, okay? That's a good thing, good practice to have in always, to read before and after, read the whole thing, because we're just pulling a piece of this. This psalm is about the Lord's knowledge of who we are, Him knowing our ways, knowing all of these, Him thinking about us, Him having a an in-depth knowledge of who we are. Now, you know, we may think about this sometimes as... Uh, the way a parent knows a child. You know how a parent can often predict what a child's about to say. They pr predict what they're about to do because they've seen them do it so much. They know where they're going next, right? They know their ways. But this is beyond that. There is an intimacy of knowledge that the Lord has of every single one of us that no one else has of us. Some, you might even say that we don't have of our own selves. The Lord has searched me and known me. He has spent time diving into who I am because he created me. He's known me all this time. He have searched and have known. He has a great in-depth knowledge of every one of us. Now, we should say there's, an, there's a, um, an assumption in this that what this tells us is not just that he knows us, but that he loves us. Because those things that we seek to know well, those people who we seek to know well are people that we love, people that we have great care for and compassion for. That's the Lord's relationship to us. He has searched us and known us. You know when I sit down, when I stand up, you understand my thoughts, you understand my travels, my rest. You are aware of all my ways. The Lord watches us. He is aware of everything that happens. Now, this is a part of the aspect of God that we cannot comprehend. I mean, we may think about this as, well, the Lord knows me, but when we think that the Lord knows every single person in the world ever created in this same way, the depth of his knowledge is not specific to David. This knowledge that he has is of every single person in the world, and, and that, that goes beyond our ability to comprehend, beyond our ability to understand that how the Lord could know and watch every single one of us all at the same time have equal knowledge and, and depth of knowledge, intimate knowledge of every single one of us all at the same time together uh, in this entire 7 billion people on the world, but not just the ones here now, but the ones who have been and the ones who are going to be. He has this in-depth knowledge. The Lord is beyond us. He is the Holy Other. Before a word is on my tongue, you all know, you know all about it, Lord. You have encircled me. You have placed your hand on me. This wondrous knowledge is beyond me. It is lofty. I am unable to reach it. This is this. God's knowledge of us is just past us. We cannot understand it. We can't, and we can't, certainly can't repeat it. And you may think that you know someone well. Maybe it's your kids or your spouse or a friend. You know them well, but the knowledge that you have of them is nowhere near the Lord's knowledge of them and nowhere near the Lord's knowledge of you. And you may think you know yourself. The Lord knows you better than you know you because my knowledge of myself gets colored by my biases and my sin and my my thinking better of myself. You know, they say when they do um, polls and they ask people questions about about church attendance, or they ask him questions about weight loss, or uh, other positive kinds of things that we want to, that we often tend to answer those questions 
in a way that makes us look better instead of honestly. Well, the Lord sees us honestly. He knows us perfectly well. He knows all of us. He knows the words. He knows what we're about to say, right? He is all around us. His hand is on us. This knowledge is beyond me. He says, it is lofty. I'm unable to reach it. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol or the abode of death, you are there. If I live at the eastern horizon or settle at the western limits, even there, your hand will lead me. Your right hand will hold on to me. This is, um, the, these are questions, you know, um, uh, rhetorical questions of comfort. I cannot get away from the Lord, and that is good. He's not, you know, the Lord's not the stalker that you can't get away from. The Lord is the love, uh, pure love of you and of me that we cannot escape because there's no place we can go where he is not. And it's almost in the sense that it's not that we could go someplace and he couldn't find us. It's that we can't go any place where he isn't already there. He's already at present, right? Heaven, death, Wherever it goes far east, as far west, wherever your hand, he says, will lead me and your right hand will hold on, that he holds on to us. Now this, we begin seeing a little difference here. He's speaking of this relationship that he has with the Lord, this holding in this hand. This comes from Romans, or yeah, it's in John and Romans, the idea of not being able to escape, of being in his hand, of being held on to him, of being his child, of, of being the sheep in his pasture. This, the Lord is watching over and holding on. He knows everything that we do. He's watching everywhere that we go. For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous and I know this very well. Now we get into this part where we start thinking about um, the Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, right, and, and protection of the unborn. But this statement here uh, that, that David is making is not just that the Lord knows me now, but the Lord has always known me even before I was born, before I was made, he knew me, right? Because he created our parts, he knit us together in the womb. He has known you all along. Before your existence, he knew you. Before your parents knew you, he knew you, right? And so I praise you because I have been remarkably, wondrously, fearfully, I think it's a King James word there, and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous, and I know this very well. Now this phrase, your works are wondrous. This is not, it's not a statement about, Lord, you did really good when you made me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know how you could have figured out to do something so wonderful. That's not what this is. It is to say, Lord, the things that you do are, are wondrous, unbelievable, beyond our ability. We think of the greatest minds and all the great robotics works that's taking place, the artificial intelligence things that are happening, writing sentences and paragraphs and papers about different subjects, you know, all these different things that you can do automated, which are all thought of and created by humans who create algorithms and all of that. And in, in, the, in the greatest expression of those comes nowhere near human, human life, humanity, nowhere near that. His works are wondrous beyond imagination, beyond our ability to understand comprehend and hold on to his works are wondrous my bones were not hidden from you when i was made in secret when i was formed in the depths of the earth your eyes saw me when i was formless all my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began this the lord has known us since before we were and knows what will happen to our lives before it ever happens he knows all of our lives now this is is much and maybe it is more so about God than it is about me that the Lord knows me he knows you he knows our lives he is beyond time sees us before we start and and after we're gone all at the same time the Lord is the one involved in every aspect of the of the creation of us the making of us right nothing was made in secret to him since when I was made in secret, but but 
It was not secret to him. Nothing of your life has been secret to him. He knows everything about you. And the Lord has thoughts about you constantly. As, no, as many times as there are grains of sand, he is thinking of you, thinking of me. And that is beyond my ability to understand, but I know that it means that every single life is precious because the Lord is thinking of every single one of those. Those people that we've never met, that we'll never know, that live on the other side of the earth, that live on the other side of town, whatever it is that we've never met and we'll never know, the Lord knows them too. He made them too. He loves them too because he is thinking of them just as much as he's thinking of you and thinking of me. And this is a wonder of who the Lord is. I hope that's helped as you study, as you prepare. Thanks so much for teaching. God bless you. I hope this is going to be a good year for you. I want you to look out. We're going to be having some videos coming up in the next month or so talking about some helps for teachers, just specifically about classrooms and growing your, your small groups and things like that. So keep an eye out for that. It's coming soon and we will see you next week.